Hey everybody, what's up? In this video, I will demonstrate how to harness the high performance of a GPU for generating fractal patterns and transforming them in real time, which can be used for creating original effects in your game with minimal effort. Let's get started. Many people, when they hear the term fractal, automatically envision the Mandelbrot set. Uh, it's not surprising because it is one of the most famous fractal shapes and has gradually become practically synonymous with the chaos theory. But what is it exactly and how do we generate it? The formula to generate the Mandelbrot set is typically expressed as follows. Zn plus 1 equals Zn to the power of 2 plus C. Well, that doesn't look too chaotic, does it? It's a quadratic iteration with a constant being added to the result. The trick is that both z and c are not real numbers, but complex numbers, which adds a new dimension to the entire calculation. So what is a complex number? We know that real numbers can be represented on the x-axis because they have only one dimension. Complex numbers have two dimensions, so we represent them as a two-dimensional vector in the xy plane, with the unit on the y-axis denoted as i, uh, lowercase i, which is defined as a square root of minus 1. If you are not familiar with complex numbers and are starting to feel a bit confused, don't worry, the theory we need in this video ends right here. The only thing we'll need further is a complex number multiplication, for which we'll use a simple formula. So, as I mentioned, uh, the complex number has a real and imaginary part, so it's usually written in this form, z equals a plus, plus bi. Now, if we want to exponentiate to the second power, we can simply do it as we usually do a polynom, so it would be a plus bi all to the second power, which is a to the second power plus 2abi minus b to the second power. In fact, usually uh, we would have plus here, but uh, because we are also using the i constant, and which is to the second power minus 1, that's why it changed to minus. And of course, in our shader, we will use vectors. It doesn't have a direct separate for complex numbers. So we will separate the real imaginary parts uh, in our shader. Uh, that would be defined as this vector 2 with two parts. And a second power would be this minus this, because these are the real parts without, without the i and this part. Very well. So this is the fundamental formula we will use in our calculations. The Mandelbrot set is defined by iterating the formula we just described on complex numbers and determining whether the iterations stay within a cer certain boundary or escape to infinity. Of course, we won't count to infinity. Uh, instead, we will use a suitable approximation, setting a maximum number of iterations. If, after reaching this maximum, the result is still within the expected range, we will declare that it has not escaped to infinity. The variable z always starts at a zero vector, and we will only change the constant c that would be based on the uv coordinates of the current pixel. Let's do it in the code. So first, we'll create a new scene, as usual. Scene to the scene, call it Mandelbrot. Mandelbrot, okay, and I will add a child node, colorect, and again we will uh, just expand it a little bit, so let's try, I don't know, 25 times, ah, too much, 15, that's better. All right, and we need a new material, a shader material which will be bound to a new shader. New shader, Mandelbrot, GD shader, 
canvas item this is correct let's just put it to the shaders folder and create click and here's the code very well so let's apply the formulas and calculations and theory we just learned and implement it in our fragment function we will start with uh, moving the origin to the center as usual uv minus 0.5 and now as i said we will have the vector z which starts as a zero vector and the constant c that would be assigned the uv coordinate so we can calculate it for uh, every every pixel in our viewport now to approximate the infinity uh, we will have uh, iterations and the max number of iterations so first let's define the iterations variable that will start at zero as well and max iterations can be integer and it would be for example 20 for start we will make it much higher later and now let's iterate uh, i will just expand it a little bit so create a cycle where is the cursor here four and a from zero to our max iterations a plus plus and now we will apply the formula we have here this kind let's do it z equals vector 2 where the real part is the x coordinate it was a in our formula so to the power of 2 we can simply multiply that by itself minus uh, y coordinate to the second power and the imaginary part of this complex number would be 2 multiplied by zx multiplied by zy and plus c the constant and now to make sure that we didn't leave the boundary because we need the boundary to define if this calculation would just go to infinity or not so simply length of this new vector if exceeds 2 let's break the cycle and find out how many iterations we made and of course we need to uh, increase the number of iterations here okay now we define the color and the color is simply the ratio between our uh, real iterations we made divided by the max iterations so that will ensure that the result is always between 0 and 1 which is our range for colors and let's assign the color like for uh, color sorry color okay is that correct no we must do it this way all right let's take a look yeah something is here something is appearing however this is only a part of the mandelbrot set because we are working within the range from uh, negative 0.5 to 0.5 so we'll add a uniform parameter zoom and set its initial value to 4 uniform float zoom equals 4 and we need to apply the zoom here mm -hmm. this is better now we can see the mandel per set so as we can see changing the zoom value and regenerating iterations for each pixel happens instantly thanks to 
GPU performing the computation of all fragments in parallel as we had a separate processor for each point on the screen. Using the standard CPU approach, this would take, this would take much longer. Let's just check it out in shade parameters and change the zoom continuously. Yeah, here we can see how fast it is. Very well. However, by exploring the center of the set, we won't find anything interesting. So we'll try changing the constant C to a different value and shift the current center of our effect. I've been experimenting with different vectors and this one returned quite an interesting result. Adding plus uh, vec2 and it was 0.26 and 000181. <coughs> All right. Yeah, I shifted. And because setting uh, very low values in the inspector isn't too convenient. We'll temporarily remove the uniform parameter and set the zoom directly in the fragment function. So I will do this. So let's just comment it out and add the zoom here. Float zoom is and let's start with 0.1. Okay. We can see something, but it is too blurred. I think we need to increase the number of iterations. Let's try 200. That's better. How about 2000? Okay, that's even better. So let's change the zoom a little bit more. Zero one. Yeah, it's emerging. One more zero. Here it is. Can you see? Can you see the original shape here? This is exactly what happens in fractals. So we will change even more. This is nice. One more. Okay. Uh, so we can observe the repeating pattern at a very high level of zoom. It's called self-similarity. And as I said, it's actually a fundamental property of all fractals. Notice that when we go below a certain threshold, the resulting image becomes imprecise and individual fragments become distorted. This is because we are working with float values, which have limited precision, leading to rounding errors. This is best observed when we write a simple script to simulate the gradual increase of the zoom value over time. So first I will change the zoom back to the uniform parameter and get rid of this line. Okay. And now we will add a script to our root node called Mandelbrot GD. Sure, why not? And let's implement something very simple here. We don't need, we don't need process function and we will define uh, two variables var time starts at zero and var power which we will need what is this damn it which we will need to gradually increase the speed of zooming because otherwise uh, it will just slow down because it needs to be done in in a special way okay and to access the uniform float parameter we need to uh, have access to the material of this node with control so we have it correct here and in the process function now we will increase the time variable by the current delta and the power would be increased by delta 2 but slow slower uh, I've been doing experiments and it looked like this is the best ratio. And now the zoom. This is the most important calculation. Let's start at 6, not 4, so we have some time to observe the whole um, set before it just increases, uh, zoom is increased or, or like this decreased and we get to more details. Divided by the power 
of time to power. That's all. And finally, we need to set the parameter in the shader. So the color rect get parameter uh, material and set shader parameter which is called zoom and the value is zoom as well that should be everything i think let's try to run it yeah can you see zooming it might be interesting to know what is the current zoom number so we can then add it to the screen and observe but right now let's just watch let's just watch the effect yeah it's increasing it's getting there and it's starting to show the visual artifacts already because of the float precision as i mentioned before and it seems it is no longer uh, what we want to see so let's finish that very well what else we can change some coefficients for example um this line uh, let's get back and what was that this number two what happens if we change it to for example uh, 1.5 uh -huh. it it is a different it it is no longer the real model dot set but we can achieve interesting shapes here for example if we change it to half <laughs> this is this is even more interesting or 0.3 yeah or let's make it bigger 3.3 okay it's getting to just uh, dissolve or something let's get back to two but of course you can try any number of uh, parameter combinations change the number of iterations change the boundary or anything else and uh, generate all kind of original shapes and effects you want to so that would be everything for now there are of course other fractals, but you could say that the Mandelbrot set is probably the most interesting and well known, which is why I used it. Take care and see you again sometime.